Right, in this video I'm going to do our first attempt at the nearest neighbour algorithm. Now the nearest neighbour algorithm will give us an upper bound to the travelling salesperson problem. Okay, We've seen already from the previous video how we can get an example of a Hamiltonian cycle. So an example that fits this network in particular. Now we're actually going to introduce our first algorithm um, that will give us an upper bound of, you know, using something that actually works. So in this case, um, how it works is that you can do it uh, with actually drawing something on this matrix, much like prims, okay? Much like prims with a matrix, it works in a very similar way. Effectively, how it begins is that you start at a vertex, and you would be told which, okay? So, depending on where you start, you can get um, different upper bounds, Okay, unlike with prims, where where you start um, doesn't matter effectively, it will always give you a minimum spanning tree. We're not looking at a minimum spanning tree here. Where you start matters, and it will give you uh, can give you different numbers. Okay, not necessarily will, but it can. So starting at a, okay, and we're going to do a. What we're doing here is going to come down here as well. Okay, or what we're writing. So starting at A, we delete the rest of row A, and then we look at the shortest route out of A, and that will connect me to B. So the first vertex that I travel to is B. I delete the rest of row B because I don't want to go back there. I am now at B. Now here's where the difference comes. In prims, prims would then say, right, we're looking down both A and B, and I would connect A to C. Okay. However, we are not trying to do a minimum spanning tree here, we're trying to do a tour. And I don't want to go, I can't go from A to B and then go from A to C. That wouldn't make any sense. I'm currently at B. And I now need my shortest distance out of B. Okay, so you only look down at the column that you have arrived at. So that would be A to B, uh, B to C, sorry. I don't know what I said, A to B again. B to C, which would be 5. Delete the rest of the row, because I don't want to go back to C. I'm now at C. And now I'm looking down just C. So that would be D. So C to D, 7, delete the rest of the row. Now I'm at D, and I go from D to E. Okay, because that's the only one that I haven't visited yet. Oh, D to E, there's a button. Didn't do that very well. There we are. Odd job. And then, from E, I need to get back to A. Okay? And that gets me back to A. So, adding up, 8, 15, 23, 29. Okay, so the nearest neighbor algorithm gives me exactly the same route, and exactly the same tor, as I found when I just had a guess which effectively from this graph was just going around the outside. Okay, so 29. So this is the nearest neighbor algorithm. And what it does, essentially in describing it, is that you start at your given vertex, you travel the shortest route out of that vertex, and then from B, you're traveling the shortest route out of B to an unconnected vertex, one you haven't gone to before. So it could be C, D, or E. And in this case, it was C. And then from C, you are going to travel to either D or E by the shortest possible route that there is. 
from the shortest possible routes, you could go to E, which is 10. You could go to D, which is 7. D is closer, so that's the one we go to. Then from D, the only one that we've got to go to now is E. Okay, so we've got to go to E by the shortest possible route. And then from E, we need to get back to A. Okay, by the shortest possible route that there is. Okay, so that's 6 in this case. So this is the nearest neighbor algorithm and how it works. You can put it straight onto a matrix like that. There are a couple of things that you should notice. There is one number circled in each column. Okay, In prints, you're more than likely to have more than one in each column. So that's how you can make sure that you haven't done one rather than the other. For nearest neighbor, there is only one in each column. You can do nearest neighbor without drawing anything on the matrix. And in my opinion, if you can do that, that's probably better. The reason being is that a nearest neighbor and a lower bound algorithm question usually come hand in hand. There is only going to be one matrix drawn. And it's much better um, if you and much easier if you do the lower bound algorithm on that matrix rather than nearest neighbor. Because nearest neighbor you can just do without. Okay? Just takes a little bit of practice.